which through its creative intention was able to animate light toward the first monad to or Ketha. But as a result of this, all this, the thoughtless light also was dragged down in the process of creation that because of its limited nature tries and tried to prevent it. This created the dialectic between the positive creative force and the destructive force. These two conflicting divine intentions of the macrocosm, which is also reflected in the microcosm, manifest as the two pillars of Kabbalah, which is in the golden dawn, are painted as black and white to further emphasize the polarity and the association with the two kinds of light. Nathan of Gaza also originated the concept of the infernal abyss filled with, with serpents set out to destroy creation, also in Suharic terms called as Sitra Ara, or the other side. The world of, of shells or cliffhood, situated below the supernals on the tree of life, in which the thoughtless lights reside. This clearly refers to the red dragon symbols of the Golden Dawn, which can be seen in the Garden of Eden before and after the Fall diagrams from practices and philosophy's grade. The red dragon is also to be found on the floor of the vault of the time. Reading the teachings of the Golden Dawn regarding the red dragon, one becomes struck with the controversial contains of his antinomian teachings, where the goal of the Aleph is to ride upon the back of the dragon, harness the forces of evil, and gain strength therefrom. This concept is, is, has also its equivalent in the Soharic concept of the rider of the serpent. The Golden Dawn teachings concern the fall and the God of Eden, concerns the process which leads to the breaking of the vessels. Note that the diagram, the God of Eden after the fall, pits the tree of life in the form of a cross, which only contains the seven lowest, lowest sephirot and that, which indicates the center of the cross and the, at the mercy of the red dragon. According to Nathan of Gaza, the only part of the tree of life which is saved from the attacks of the dragon is the supernal, which is symbolized by the great circle. Because of it being protected by the four elemental cherubim, and a, a sword, and the flaming sword, which God placed there for the protection of the garden. According to Nathan, this is the place of the thoughtful light on the tree of life. According to Nathan, the creation below the abyss is in a hopeless condition that only can be restored by the Messiah figure. This is a reference to the new Adam or in the philosophy of the, of the Golden Dawn, which is said to be able to claim his throne in Tifaret and rule with his rod of iron, a clear reference to the 12th chapter of the book of Revelation. The Messiah is the offspring of the fatherly Kochma, wisdom, and the motherly Bina, understanding, Abba and Aima, the thoughtful light and the thoughtless light, respectively. Together they beget the created world within the abyss, but also its redeemer, the Messiah, that can be seen as being represented by that of knowledge. That is both involved in the fall, but simultaneously also con constitutes its highest point and is the intermediary between the supernal triad and the fallen universe. Messiah, according to Nathan, stands above the law of Torah and cannot be judged by, by the common criteria of morality concerning what is good and what is evil. As the redeemer of the fallen world and the intermediary link between that which is above and that which is below the abyss, he must also be part of his fallen condition. Nathan explains that the soul of the Messiah, as well as ours, constitute both the thoughtless light and the, and the thoughtful light. In his mission, he cleanses and redeems the fallen ones, but becomes himself unclean and fallen in the process. He is, according to Nathan, the holy serpent, which subdues the serpents of the abyss which reminds of, of the numerical concordance with, between the world Messiah, the anointed, and Nahash, serpent. Now, this brings us to the sixth sephirah of Tifat, which is a central position in both the Sabbatean doctrine and in the Golden Dawn. As you all know, it is a reference to Zaur Ampin, or Macropos Macroposophos, which by Nathan 
was conceptualized as Malka Kadisha or the Holy King, in his aspect as united with his, with his queen, the Shekinah. He is also called the God of Faith by Nathan. Nathan speaks of the scorch of Tifat or the light of Ilana Yakira, the precious tree at the level of the Atsilut, the highest of the Kabbalistic worlds, created by the harmonious union of the thoughtful light and the thoughtless light. This union is considered necessary since the thoughtless light has the powers of creation, but there is the thoughtful light, in spite of its desire to create, is impotent and has to employ the creative forces of the thoughtless light. This light of the God of Faith is then animated downwards to the other three Kabbalistic worlds, being part of the abyss of serpents. This animated force is called Mana Yakira and is used by the thoughtless light to subdue the serpents. This light also incarnates the Messiah, elevating him to a Godhead, the God of Faith. As a matter of fact, Nathan explained of the Sabbatian service manic depressive dis disorder in these terms, that he is in his own person, united both the thoughtful and the thoughtless lights, the former being the manic faces, but the latter marking the depressive states of the Messiah. And this is comforted to hear for us by Polars. Lastly, we find in the Frankish Kabbalah also the notion of Mashaya, Mash'asha Dunma, the work of silence, which has a clear relationship with the god form of Harpocrates, the god of silence of the Golden Dawn and also of Freemasonry. So now, what can we learn from the Sabbatean, and especially the Frankish tradition and position? Simply speaking, that the Golden Dawn neither is or should ever become a religion. The Golden Dawn is a spiritual science and art and which makes use of certain religious symbols, predominantly Christian. But it has nothing to do with religious dogma. Adepts of our tradition should always maintain the integrity of spiritual independence towards uh, organized religion. But at the same time, we must remember the admonition of the new five grade to revere all religions as containing a spark of spiritual truth. No religion is truer than the other. No religions, whatever flavor, can ever contain the whole truth about God. To truly see God, we must forsake religion to see beyond the mental projections of common man that governs the consensus image of him. Man, in fact, has created God into his own image. He was created out of man's fear of punishment and of guilt. To see God, we must let go of all preconceived notions about his true nature. We must let go of all guilt and the culture's consensus ideas about his nature and the nature of sin. We must embrace God as children, pure and undefiled, mentally and spiritually speaking. This is the true significance of Sabbatian antinomianism. Thank you. <laughs>